did recently reach out to Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics with Wisconsin, and they will be forwarding our NDTR day to the governor to be sure that it is recognized by the state. Welcome to NDTR Spotlight, the corner of the internet where NDTR shine. I'm your host, Maria Lorraine, and today I'm so, so excited because March 2023 is the first month where NDTRs have a day for them in National Nutrition Month. And to celebrate, NDTR Spotlight has partnered with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics to highlight some NDTRs who are really active and doing great things within the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. We are bringing back Becca. She was on the podcast last August of 2021. We're checking back in with her and we're going to hear what her experience has been being a member of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and see if she thinks it's something that other NDTRs should get involved with. Becca, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me back on. Yes, I'm so, so excited because you are definitely an indie chair that stands out with all the things that you have done in the past and continue to do. It was so exciting re-looking up what you're doing online and and get preparing for this spotlight because I was like, she's continuing to do great things and that's just so encouraging. So if you're curious to hear what Becca has done in the past, you have to watch that last episode. But update us now. What are you currently doing in 2023? Um, so right now I'm working in clinical nutrition at a local teaching hospital in Wisconsin. And I also am continuing to work on my private practice, which is Your Elevated Nutrition. And um, they're both huge highlights in my life. And I'm so proud to be working in both aspects. That sounds so exciting to have both fields. And I, I do find that if you have that clinical experience or getting that clinical experience just makes you so much better at private practice and diving into those things. Exactly. Yeah. You have the opportunity to work with a population that you wouldn't normally otherwise. So it's the perfect blend of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, it's give and take for both worlds. So that's what you're doing currently for work, but you're also an Academy member. So when did you first become an Academy member? Um, so I actually joined as a student. So it was about 2018, 2019. Um, my dietetics program shared a lot of the highlights, the benefits, and just the opportunity to get involved and really observe the practices that happen within the academy. And you have that ability to do that in a safe space as a student. Um, so you're just taking it all in and observing everything and really getting your feet wet. You're wise to listen to your professors to join the academy because I recall when I was in school as well, they, they talked about the benefits. But you stayed. You stayed in the academy. So what encouraged you to get involved in the academy outside of just being a student? There are a lot of volunteer opportunities to get involved. There's also networking and marketing. Um, as long as you're staying relevant within the academy, you see the changes that are taking place. But you have your foot in the door to continue working towards the changes you want to see. Um, and the biggest thing to remember is that the academy is membership-based. So that means that it's the members that make up the academy and that are working towards those changes. So if you are sharing your thoughts with your colleagues, that's not going to promote the changes you want to see. You have to be involved and you have to stay as a member to continue working towards those changes. Yes, I love I love that you said that because I do think sometimes there's this misconception that they are there and then we are here, but we have to, as NDTRs, need to be involved in the academy to see changes that we really want to see. So you mentioned volunteer options and, and being a member that's adding value. So what are you contributing to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics? Previously, when I was just graduated, I worked on the student nutrition pro program at MATC, uh, Milwaukee Area Technical Co College, and I was able to share that experience with the Minnesota affiliate of nutrition and dietetics. So presenting the results and the success that we had was really important in the midst of the pandemic and addressing food insecurity. But it also was really important to showcase that work as an NDTR to show that this wasn't just, you know, some random program that was put out there. It was dedicated work from our side of the credential. And that was really just a huge movement. We did have additional RDs reach out to see, how did you do this? And how was how this accomplished by someone who's an NDTR? And 
who is in your corner helping you. So a collaboration, but also people hearing and listening and taking part of it was really important. That's incredible. So it sounds like that was your involvement was at the state level. Yeah. And so kind of talk us through a little bit more of this program that you or the program that was developed. Um, so this was grant funded by the American Cancer Society. Uh, it was a generous, generous grant to address food insecurity and then connect resources to the people in the community that needed them. Um, so working through that was really just a challenge in itself of going through the pandemic and having limited resources. So this opened the door to so many opportunities for the students at MATC. Um, when it ended, I shared on the podcast, podcast last time that we weren't sure how the program was going to continue due to the funding ending. Uh, however, since that time, the school has initiated different sustainable efforts to keep that program going and using a lot of the resources that I developed. So it's still continuing in a new way. Um, so just seeing that kind of legacy continue on is really amazing. That must be so encouraging to see that hard work really pay off and to see it benefiting people and students and future NDTRs and dietitians in the profession. And so you mentioned there was the grant. Can you specify or tell in a little more detail of how the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics was important in the rolling out of that grant? Yeah, so it's really important to see this uh, partnership with the Academy and having the membership and then backing it through the program um, as a credentialed professional. It extends the validity of what we have to offer, but it opens so many doors as an Academy member showing that this is possible, this is how we were able to get things going, and then using that as a, a way to continue our networking and collaborating with other professionals. Wow, so the networking and then also I love what you said about just the validity. Like we have this great credential and then we have all of these NDTRs and dietitians all over the nation through the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics like saying, yeah, we know what we're doing and we have all these resources and we are just, does it, I guess, is it fair to say it just validates our credential even more? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So we talked about what you provided in the Academy and how you're contributing. What resources are you utilizing? Yeah, so starting from the beginning as a student, I used uh, the Student Scoop newsletter. That was kind of a personal goal that I wanted to get involved and things got a little busy. So I actually did not follow through on that goal. Um, but it's there and it's a great way to get your feet wet, try a new experience, grow your skills or discover a new skill. Um, and it may even lead to a career opportunity down the road. Um, additional resources that I really enjoy having at my fingertips are the journals and position papers to help everyone stay up to date on the latest research. And there's also the job posting boards and the NDTR salary calculator, which I think is so vital if you're walking into a new job, having that piece of paper in your hand saying, this is my pay range expectations because I know my worth and the academy knows my worth. So they're vouching for my abilities. So this is kind of where I'm falling at. That is a great resource. I have not, I personally, I shame on me. I have not heard of. Thank you for bringing that up, that calculator. Yeah, it's so neat because you can add how many years you've been registered, what type of industry you're working in, if you're supervising anyone, all of that extends into the calculator and raises your range. Well, it's very helpful. Let me ask you this. We're going to get a little personal here, but a lot of times with private practice, one of the big things is knowing how much to pay. So have you used this calculator in developing private practice costs for yourself? It's definitely very helpful because then you can set a goal that you're working to or see if you are on target for where you should be. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, another resource that I enjoy using and I think anyone that's in the field should use is referring back to the scope of practice to be sure that you are operating in within your scope to protect yourself your patients, your clients, 
and that you're also representing the credential appropriately. Those are killer resources that are available to members. I love, thank you for highlighting all of those. And that scope of practice, that is one I always send out to indie TRs who have questions. I'm like, look at this scope of practice because it is helpful to really see what has been outlined for this credential because it's confusing sometimes. Exactly. I do have um, a nice flow chart of, you know, yes or no questions. Do you meet this criteria? Yes, follow to the next box. If it's no, let's back up and see where we should be practicing. So it's really helpful to have that visual uh, flow chart to see where you fall. Yeah, and it sounds like these these resources also help lay out your career with like the calculator you were saying and then even that flow chart. If there's a no that you want to turn into a yes, maybe there's something you can do to make that no into a yes. Exactly. Very helpful. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so as I said in the intro, this is our first NDTR day in March, which is so exciting. I want to know what was your reaction when you found out that the Academy finally acknowledged its NDTR members enough to give a day? I was ecstatic. Um, it was all I could talk about for a few weeks, and I'm sure other people were very tired of hearing about it, but this was a long time coming, and uh, we deserve to celebrate, so... Yeah, and I would I would love to hear in your own words why, I mean, it might seem silly that we're so excited about a day like this, but why is it important that the Academy highlights its NDTR members? The Academy is made up of not just RDs, but it's also made up of NDTRs. So we are providing a good chunk of that membership, and we appreciate to be appreciated for the work we're contributing. Yes, just the acknowledgement. I love that. And so as we get more acknowledgement and the Academy is recognizing this credential, what misconceptions or what is something that people might not know about NDTRs? Uh, We are very versatile. We have a lot to offer. Uh, We have people that really share their expertise in the culinary aspect. We have professionals that work well in nutrition education. And we also have others that really enjoy the clinical inpatient aspect, which is so important to have people represented well in the hospital field, to be working with patients that really need that help when they're so vulnerable. Very well said, because there definitely is a little bit of a stigma that diet tech is just this one little clinical job that does dietary food menus. (laughs) It's not at all the case, as you just discussed in that response. And so how would you like NDTRs to be honored or acknowledged? Is the day enough? Do you want something else? How do you how do you think that we should be acknowledged this month? I think this is a great first step. Um, and we are encouraged to continue seeing more. And with more NDTRs sharing in that membership, we're able to collaborate our ideas and push towards advancements. Um, I did recently reach out to my state affiliate, uh, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics with Wisconsin, And they will be forwarding our NDTR day to the governor to be sure that it is, you know, recognized by the state. Um, So that is coming down the pipeline, which is very exciting. And that is a beautiful example of an NDTR, not just saying, why aren't we recognized, but doing the work to really highlight this credential in a way that is needed. And that takes an NDTR to step up and make that move. So I appreciate. Thank you for doing that. I'm sure everyone will benefit from that. And so with that being said, do you recommend an NDTR to join the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics? Absolutely. Um, we, we can't see these changes and improvements if we don't have our own credential being recognized and represented well. Um, we just recently had the Academy put out their vote um, where you're able to vote on the new members and delegates of the house. Um, And we did have two NDTRs on the ballot, which is so encouraging and exciting to see. Uh, So continuing to see that involvement and engagement, um, we're really heading in a good direction. Yes. So with the, with NDTRs joining the academy, there's the involvement. You mentioned earlier that it's, you're a member, you need to add to the academy. You just can't just Go join the Academy to take. So how can an NDTR get involved in the Academy to begin to make changes and highlight this credential? We need to be willing to share our voice and share our ideas with one another, one another, but also at 
a higher level. So not just sharing it with ourselves amongst peers and colleagues, but stepping out and finding who is, who has a seat and who can we reach out to and then networking and sharing our ideas and then being willing to act on it, right? It's not enough just to have an idea, but we need to propose a plan and actionable steps in order to reach that goal. Being an Academy member and being so involved, you see some of the behind the scenes and that's what's great about being an Academy member is you see behind the scenes, you're making changes, making polls and you're networking. So why do you, what are, what are some of the behind the scenes that you've seen in the creation of NDTR Day? Yeah, so this is actually really exciting. Um, and I had the privilege to be part of this due to my network. Um, and that was the push and the, the questions and the emails that were shared of asking why isn't there an NDTR day and what can we do about it? Um, and this came from RDs um, and including the NDTRs into that conversation, but knowing that we have that support from our colleagues uh, really just extends that appreciation. Um, so specifically Central Arizona College, Cincinnati State University and Milwaukee Area Technical College that were striving and pushing and working together to get that communication established and then working ahead with the Academy's marketing team to say, let's get this engaged. Let's push for this next year and then, you know, we're good to go. It's so exciting. That's incredible. So it's members. It's members who are making the change and dietitians and DNDTR is working together. And that's honestly the best, the best combination because that's how one, we used to be address all of these nutrition complications and chronic diseases that are preventable through nutrition and then how we also promote our profession. And this year, um, it's actually going to be the 50th anniversary for celebrating the idea of National Nutrition Week. Um, and then in 1980, it was, it was extended to National Nutrition Month because so many people in the general public were interested in learning more about nutrition and how it affected them. And also a big number is RDs are celebrating their 15th anniversary for having their established RDN day. And now we are, we are also part of the chain. This is such a big year, 50, 15, and first. <laughs> Right. Exactly. That is so exciting. Anything else do you want to add uh, um, Add in regards to the celebration that's going to be happening this year? I'm really looking forward to, to hearing from other NDTRs online, seeing what they're doing with their workplaces, how they're getting involved, and then what changes we want to continue to work towards. Yeah. Always thinking, always forward thinking, not being complacent where you are. All right. Becca, last question for you. This year, National Nutrition Month's theme is Fuel for the Future. And as an NDTR, how do you help people fuel their future while protecting the planet? Yeah, I think it's really important to plan your meals ahead. Utilizing meal planning, uh, you know what you have. You're also shopping your pantry at home, so there's less food waste. You can shop for items that have less packaging, reduce overall waste. Um, and then you're also shopping locally. You're using a CSA or a community supported agriculture farm to purchase your fruits and vegetables, your produce. Um, and then you're also getting your family involved and your kids involved because we're not just working for ourselves. We're helping grow and teach the next generations on how to use food correctly and reduce our food waste. Very well said. Thank you for answering that question. And I want to wrap up. If people want to reach out to you, if they want to follow you, if they want to learn more about your private practice, how can they find you online? Um, so I am on LinkedIn. I'm also on Instagram, Becca Blank and DTR. My professional page is Your Elevated Nutrition. Well, thank you so much for your time and all that you're doing in the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, it's NDTRs like you that has allowed NDTRs to actually have a day. So I really appreciate the work that you're doing. And I hope that you were appropriately highlighted and think and happy National Nutrition Month and NDTR Day.